Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Pori Ranch stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! First one is titled, Treating Me Like Garbage? Hacky Revenge. Hi everyone, I don't post often but I follow this channel consistently and I am so happy I finally have something to share. This started a couple of months ago. The background. I am 30. I am a cybersecurity expert and a systems architect. We joke about me being a systems and security architect, and I have a solid background in electrical engineering. I have a background in karate, Krav Maga and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I weighed approximately 90 kilograms, approximately 762 bananas for my American friends. I recently moved to a new flat, approximately 7 months ago. I work from home. I had the bad idea to let others in my complex know that I had tools for basic maintenance like screwdrivers, drills, stuff like that, and I let my neighbors know that for small things I could help, I just wanted to be a good neighbor. The trigger. Everything was fine until one day I got woke up at 7 am by my phone constantly ringing as the WhatsApp chat for the complex was on fire. Apparently the main gate was not working at all. The neighbors already tried calling the usual guy that fixes this kind of stuffs but, duh, he was not answering, probably still sleeping? Just saying. I put on some work pants, my COVID mask and got outside with my screwdriver's bag to unlock the gate to let people out. Introducing the guy from the attic, fourth floor, the typical 50-ish man, with his Porsche Carrera that wants anyone to know he's rich, he's the boss, obviously no COVID mask whatsoever etc etc. For readability he will be referred to as Porsche father. Porsche father. We have been calling you since 6am, we are late for our breakfast. Me. Calm down, I am just the neighbor from number 6, I can unlock the gate and let you out for now but we still have to wait for the technician to come and fix it. Portia father. Well, it's 10 minutes that I am waiting here, couldn't you get up earlier? My daughter is turning 18 next week and she is having a bad time. He points to a girl in his car, Portia daughter, a beautiful teen but with the most extreme resting witch face that I had ever seen. Anyway, I work from home and my shift is 9 to 18, so I usually wake up at 8 am, so yeah. Porsche daughter. Let that idiot fix the thing and let's go, I am gonna miss my croissant. I ignore them, turn around and open my screwdriver's bag, and I start to unlock the gate from one side. Everything is a little bit rusty so I treat everything carefully as I don't want to damage anything. Especially my brand new screwdrivers, they had been gifted to me by my father when I moved in this new flat. Porsche father loses what was left of his temper grabs the biggest screwdriver from my bag, without asking anything, and starts unscrewing the other side of the gate, screaming blasphemies and other totally nice things towards me. I slowly get up and approach Porsche father that at this point is trying to turn a screw with a screwdriver that's too big for it, scratching both. Porsche father doesn't even watch me, and at this point tries a lever to pop out the screw. I try to stop him but inevitably the screwdriver breaks my new shiny red screwdriver. Me. That was part of my new set. Who told you to take it? Why did you do that? He grabs my arm and starts screaming random stuff, but at this point a lot of neighbors were already watching us and he was red angry for his late breakfast. Me. Let my arm go. Porsche father. Fix this ducking gate fast. Me. Let my arm go. He then tries to punch me in the stomach, and in that moment my reflexes just kicked in and I just deviated the punch, got into his defense and just placed him on the ground, then I grabbed the broken screwdriver and just returned back to my side of the gate. Note. As I practiced for a lot of time dangerous sports I have what's basically translates to a federal license, if I ever were to be found to have a collutation and the police had to intervene I would be considered armed and I could face jail. Porsche father was outraged, he started screaming more stuff as I just turned back to my side of the gate, tossed the broken screwdriver in my bag and unlocked the first side. Porsche father. You have to be careful with me, I can ruin your life. I just ignore him, 
push him away from the gate and proceeded to unlocking the other side of the gate. Having unlocked the two sides the gate now opens freely. I open the two sides and as I do that Porsche father tosses away the screwdriver's bag, scratching the shiny metal case and almost drives over me while going out with the car. Porsche daughter, by Ducker. A neighbor, good neighbor, approached asking if I was all okay, as his wife was collecting my screwdrivers and bag from the ground. Me. Yeah, he just wanted to have his moment, it's okay. Good neighbor. He is always like that sadly, but happily he is home only at night but even then he makes a lot of noise. The trigger, too. Fast forward to 8 p.m., I was laying on the sofa watching some movie and I hear ringing on my door. I open it and Portia father. Who do you think you are to mess with me? You are a nothing and you should just keep your mouth shut. I just close the door. He kept ringing at my door for good approximately 5 minutes, at that point I just walk to the fuse box and disconnect the bell. I could hear him scream from the stairways but the noise dampeners in the walls really work miracles, so I just turned up the TV volume. Repeat this scene for the following 4 days. He would ring at 6.30 am just to wake me, and he would keep ringing at 8 pm just to scream crap. After 4 days he just stopped, but at this time I had to have a pro revenge, but I didn't really know how, yet. The opportunity presented itself the following Wednesday, Porchchedotter's birthday. The opportunity. At 8 pm I start hearing loud music, happy, screams and people burping and stuff all coming from the attic. I just let it be, but I could clearly hear at least a dozen voices of young guys, girls and, since she just turned 18, most of them were probably underage to be drinking. I just let it go, they were just having fun, and also at 10 pm we have national curfew due to covid so everything will be over soon, right? Wrong. 11 pm comes, nothing changes. Midnight, nothing changes. 1 am, nothing changes. I suddenly have an idea. I grab a low pi, a LoRaWAN enabled device, super high distance connections with low power, a Raspberry Pi 0W, it has a modified Debian distro that I use when doing pen tests, a small battery pack in my laptop and I just reach the rooftop. I quickly connected the Raspberry Pi to the neighbor's Wi-Fi, thank you default passwords, and configured the low pi to trigger a specific Raspberry Pi's input on connection. I write a simple man in the middle script and I leave everything in an electrical box on the rooftop and I just return to my flat, and call the police for, suspected underage orgy with alcohol and stuff, you'll understand in a minute. I watch the street and notice that a car is coming from the distance, blue lights on. Tilda 2 AM. I trigger the first action from another LoRaWAN device from my flat, the music suddenly stops. I hear them complaining and they are clearly trying to turn on the music again. I wait for the police to reach the parking lot and trigger the second action. Every website is redirected to the most loud porn gangbang video I have ever seen, pumped directly from Porsche father's loudspeakers. The police enter and go directly to the attic. What happened there, I don't really know, but what I know it's the aftermath. As we were still in lockdown it was legally allowed to only have two relatives at home, or else you could receive a huge fine and could even be registered as, criminal offense, pandemic, I am not illegal, sorry. So they apparently ended up with, 560 euros of fine for, illicit gathering. 1000 euros each, for 24 people, so 24, 000 euros, for, broken curfew. 250 euros of fine for ambulance and intoxication analysis, four times so 1,000 euros. For a cool total of 25,560 euros plus something that I might have forgotten. All for having treated me like garbage. Oh and yeah, the Raspberry Pi is still on the rooftop and I have upgraded it giving it a nice solar panel. I randomly turn on the porn mode, when I feel sad, it always makes me smile. Next one is titled forwarding a shared mailbox to your home? Get reported for mail fraud. Alright, so this didn't happen to me, but to my mom, or rather it happened in her workplace. My mom works for a well-known insurance company, and because of investigations, I didn't want to share until a few months passed. Anyways, a lady who's basically a Karen but off-brand, 
who'll be called Karen to hide her name, is known to cause issues. She would complain about everyone, nag people, not do her work, and everyone at her workplace hates her. Some examples are not going to work in the slightest of bad weather so she wouldn't get hurt after a surgery she had like a year ago, yet refuses to go on disability, seemingly because it's not as bad as she claims, she'd be late a lot, would mess up, and make excuses to do her own thing. Here's where it gets interesting. The boss had enough, and she gets fired. Four days later, the boss realized that he hasn't been getting any mail after the woman calls him to ask if he had her mail in his business P.O. box that he let her get mail at, because she was a high manager and would collect the mail for him. Well, it turns out that the lady went to the P.O. box after being fired, forwarded it to her address, checking the box that says, is this a business address, and delivering all of his important business mail from clients and other things needed as soon as possible when they arrive. The boss goes straight to the police department to file a report for mail fraud, which is a felony in the USA, where this story takes place, and has a punishment of up to 30 years in prison, a $1 million fine, or both. I don't know the specifics of what happened after that, but it's safe to say that the government doesn't like you abusing government services. Next one is titled, This is a quiet car. I take the train to work each morning and then again to get home. I like to sit in the quiet car because it allows me to think and do a little extra work each day. On the train ride home today a woman in front of me kept talking on the phone even after people nicely asked her to be quiet. The conductor also came through and informed her she was on a quiet car. The seats we are in have very little support so someone behind you could push your seat and you'd feel it. Several riders decided it wasn't worth it and switched cars. I decided I had enough and slouched far enough so both of my knees were firmly in the back of her seat pushing fairly hard. She cocked her head around and told me to put my knees down. I closed my eyes and fake slept. She got up and moved to a different seat. There was a person behind her and guess what he did? Knees to the back of the chair. People started catching on and she chose a seat with no one behind her. Another rider changed seats behind her and she got some more knees. The conductor came through again and was unaware of our little revenge. She got up and told him that people were putting knees into her back and stalking her to each spot. The conductor put his index finger to his lips and said, shish, this is a quiet car. Next one is titled, bank teller is forced to greet customers and it's terrifying. I worked as a bank teller. The other tellers were all female. Our sales and service manager expected us to greet customers warmly the second they entered from across the bank. Hello there. Hi. Welcome to US Bank. It was even turned into a competition. When he heard, noticed tellers greeting customers he gave them a point on his tally. My greeting strategy was to wait for initial eye contact after they entered the building and began approaching my window, then say, hello in a friendly way, and give a polite little head nod and smile. This was apparently unsatisfactory. I was talked to because I wasn't bubbly enough. It was pointed out to me how well the other tellers were greeting people walking in, how many points they all had accumulated, and I was told I needed to be more like my female co-workers. This sounded great in theory, but I am a 6 feet 4 inches 290 pounds male and I knew it would be easy to show them the error of their ways. The next person entering the bank received a bellowing Sing Sanji, hi there. Welcome to US. Bank, from 60 feet away, with a dozen people in between. To say it startled the crap out of everyone in the bank would be an understatement. I was informed my polite, hello, and nod would be fine going forward. Next one is titled, don't talk crap about minimum wage employees who are just doing what they're mandated to do. So I'm a photographer at a popular tourist attraction. When you come in, you get a free photo included with your ticket in front of a green screen and you can pick from several backgrounds later. A lot of people skip the photo because they don't want to take a picture in a mask. It's cool if they politely continue, but a lot of people make rude remarks, roll their eyes, etc. as if I, a 21-year-old girl, made the mask mandate or something. A large group of Russian people come in, I recognized it immediately because my mom is Russian and speaks fluently, she never taught me but that's a different story. 
Anyways, the group isn't social distancing at all, not giving the group in front of them any space. They're not interested in a photo so they're trying to walk past, but I explain they have to wait as does my coworker. They start rolling their eyes and I could feel it in my bones that they were saying nasty things about us. So I looked over at my coworker and said, I want ice cream, perfectly fluent in Russian, and they all looked at me as if they were about to mess their pants. This might not be the ultimate form of revenge, but knowing that they thought I understood everything they said about me was more than enough to make me happy. Wear your mask folks, or if you don't like wearing a mask, maybe don't come to highly populated tourist attractions and be passive aggressive to the employees, we're just trying not to get fired. Last one is titled, Someone threw my baby's laundry down the hall. This happened a few years ago. I had just settled into a new apartment with my, now ex-husband and our infant son. We lived on the second floor of a three-story building. There was a laundry room on the third floor but it only had one washer and dryer for the whole building, maybe 20 apartments. I went up there a couple of times to do a quick load but it was always occupied so I gave up trying. Instead, we'd go to the laundromat down the street as needed and get it all done at once. So we'd been living there about two months and it's New Year's Eve and there's a big snowstorm raging outside. We were running low on pajamas for the baby and neither one of us wanted to trek out. I decided to try again upstairs. Lucky me, it was empty. Washer and dryer were both free. I started the wash and went back down to my apartment for a half hour. I promise you it was no longer than that. Barely finished an episode of a friend's rerun and then I went upstairs to see where we were at in the wash cycle. Lo and behold, as soon as I got upstairs, I saw my baby's onesies and little blankets scattered down the hallway outside the laundry room. I thought at first maybe someone stole some items and left the rest, but it was actually all there. All wet and soapy and seemingly stepped on. I was kinda scared at that point, so I gathered it all up and was just gonna go back downstairs. But then I hear the washer is running. Hmm. The machine was at the spin stage. I open it up and it was stuffed. It was a huge load of clothes. I quickly figured it out. Very shortly after I started the machine, someone took our stuff out to do their own on my dime. And if that wasn't enough of an a whole move, they threw it all out the room and seemingly kicked it down the hallway. My initial fear of the situation turned into absolute uncontrollable rage. The clothes inside the machine were nice. Someone could certainly afford nice things but apparently could not afford the $1.50 washing fee. Or didn't have quarters. Lots of nice Victoria's Secret bras and underwear too. There is a window in that room that faces the alley where many pigeons like to gather and take shits. If you look down you'd see dumpsters and the occasional car driving by turning the fresh falling snow into a yucky black street slush. I took all the clothes out of the machine. One by one, I flicked every piece out the window. Some of the intimates got stuck on little ledges and dangled like haphazardly hung ornaments. I then ran back to my apartment and just kinda sat around. I had mixed feelings, did I go too far? Nope. It was during that cooling off period that I saw that there was even more concentrated damage to my baby's stuff than I initially realized. Family friend had sewn him a little blanket and a little patch was ripped right off. Who the duck takes their issues out on a baby's possessions? Any semblance of guilt I had was completely gone. Took over two hours, that part probably confuses me off the most. Couldn't wait 30 minutes for our load to finish and yet it took her so long to check on hers. But I finally heard the shrill screams. Loud enough to know what it was, but muffled by the walls and distance. I wish I could have seen her face. Happy New Year, witch. Thanks for listening.